Oh, hello. Can we please talk about UFC Vegas 52? I'm also going to chat a little bit about news that's been going on, uh, you know, in and around the world of combat sports. A lot of uh, speculation around Tyson Fury boxing Francis Ngannou. Uh, so let's put fustigation aside and get into the Burt Locker episode 114. <laughs> So, first off, I'm going to have a quick look at UFC Vegas 52, Andraj versus Lee Moosh. Now, that was a, that was, it was a good, but really good main event. But there are also some, I played some terrible bets that were really, really terrible this week. Uh, they really lived up to the uh, terrible bets mantra. So I'm, I'm back on form, guys. Don't you worry about that. Uh, so, Chase Sherman, he never even made it to the Octagon. It's due to an undisclosed medical reason. Um, possibly because he was having to fight uh, Alexander Romanov, uh, who is just a straight-up killer. I mean, he's so much of a killer, the bookies actually had Sherman as an 8-1 to one underdog to win. Just to win. 8-1 to one against in a two-man fight at heavyweight. That is mental. I actually had a quid on Sherman, just because I thought, well, what the fuck not? Um... I didn't think he was going to win that one in all likelihood. But, uh, yeah, that, that one never even happened. So, obviously, Romanov's going to be looking for a new opponent soon, hopefully. Uh, then we've got Dwight Grant. He got stopped. I had him to get the knockout. Uh, basically, I did say this one was a bit of a toss-up. It was, it was throwing good money after bad, really. But Dwight Grant, it, I, I, got, I, I flipped the coin and the wrong side landed. It was actually a great job from Sergey there to get the knockout. Sergey Kandas Kandosko? Kandosko. Uh, yeah, no, he did a good job actually. Um, I look forward to seeing him again. And again, speaking of picking the wrong result, I, I picked the wrong finish for Tyson Pedro. Tyson Pedro for me was always winning that fight. It was a very good performance, but he got the TKO knockout, not the submission. The, the TKO knockout was actually longer odds. And, um, yeah, I could have done with that submission, honestly. It's like, come on, come on, Pedro. What are you doing? What are you doing to me? Good to see him back, though. Really good to see him back. And uh, Jordan also, shout out. I didn't have a bet on this one, but Jordan got a very nice guillotine over, over Veneta, Lando Veneta there. That was, a, that was a really decent little scrap, actually. You should go back and watch that one. I'll tell you what else was a, was a good little scrap. God damn, Jessica Andrade, you crafty little vixen. What what are you doing? Just just tap, Just tap, casually tapping people out from standing. Fucking awesome. Absolutely awesome. I, I, look, don't get me wrong, I still think that Lemos is really one to watch in that division because standing, she was picking Andrade apart a little bit. You know, and I did say, actually, that Andrade's uh, you know, path of least resistance to get the victory would be to take the fight down to the ground and uh, possibly get the submission. She didn't even need to do that. She clamped it she literally like got she because she was she was taking a few nasty leg kicks some of those leg kicks that lee moose lands it, uh, they are just killer man they are horrible nasty leg kicks uh yeah so basically uh andrage closed the distance grabbed her in a standing head and arm triangle and uh yeah just choked her out from standing it was it was the first time that that's ever been done so congratulations to you jessica andrage we've had standing rear naked chokes before but never a standing um standing uh, arm triangle head and arm triangle i believe i don't know if it was a guillotine or technically a das but the choke that uh, john jones got live to machida in that was a different shot. I think it might have been technically a guillotine. I'm not quite sure. It's either guillotine, or, guillotine or or dust. But either way, that was another standing choke. Uh, you don't see too many of them. You don't see too many of them. So yeah, good for her. That was that was a great performance. And uh, yeah, so before I get into the news, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and thank you for all your support. The best way you can support this show is please just like and share and subscribe. Uh, if you could just share the video, you don't even have to say anything. Just hit share. Hit share and just and gets it out there into the ether, you know, preferably on Twitter rather than on Facebook because apparently Facebook doesn't really like YouTube stuff. But there you go. And uh, comment as well. Comment on on the video. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts on the fights. Let me know who you bet on. Let me know if you cleaned up. I love seeing success stories on bets. Just let me know if you just cleaned up at the weekend by betting on the opposite of everything that I said, because that's usually the best course of action. And uh, yeah, I also have uh, the Patreon. Obviously, don't forget on the Patreon, you do get early access to the picks on a Friday night, and there is extra content 
on there as well. It's a bargain, one pound a month. It's like buying me a can of Coke every month. And uh, you'd do that for me, wouldn't you? Huh? Yeah, I'm a nice enough guy. But yeah, anyway. Uh, but thank you for all your support. And uh, yeah, let's crack on. So, obviously, Tyson Fury boxed Dillian White at the weekend. It was no real surprises in the result. You know, it is, uh, Dillian White was a massive underdog, and rightfully so. And, uh, yeah, it, but it's more what happened after the fight was uh, Tyson Fury uh, was joined by Francis Ngannou. Now, <laughs> yeah, so the Francis, Tyson Fury, rather, is saying that he's retiring from active uh, competition. Real talk. After the boxing match between Anthony Joshua and Uchicks, uh, once they've got a, a winner in that one, they're going to find a way of putting together Fury and the winner of that for all the belts. Come on. How, how is he going to turn that down? He ain't. Do you know what I mean? He, he's retired. Sure, 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 sure. He's retired. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, the, the, he's retired until they announce that, you know, Anthony Joshua needs an opponent or, or Utix needs an opponent and uh, they want to put all the belts and unify every single belt. He's not turning that shit down. Come on now, let's be real. Anyway, he did say that he wants to do some entertaining fights. He wants to do some exhibition fights, get some of that Floyd Mayweather money, as he put it. And yeah, so you know, I'm all for that because he said, yeah, as he said, uh, Tyson Fury, he is an entertainer. You know, he said, he said that I'm an entertainer. I'm here to entertain people. and I would like to get some entertaining fights. So he was pointing to, you know, Francis Ngannou for that entertaining fight. You know, he said we could have special rules, have the MMA gloves on. Doesn't really matter, right? MMA gloves, boxing gloves. If it is boxing rules, then Francis Ngannou is going to get fustigated. But put fustigation aside, Mo. You have a choice. Stand here in the ladies' bathroom. Sorry, that was a little Simpsons uh, quote there for you. Old Lucia Sweet. But yeah, anyway. Uh, Francis Ngannou, whilst he will get fustigated... It's probably a good option for him. Look, good for Francis. If he can get that boxing match, that exhibition with Tyson Fury, Joe, he'll make maybe like he'll make a lot of money. Joe, it's not gonna be like spoiler alert. It's not gonna be the forty million that people keep on fucking talking about on on Twitter and on Facebook and shit. That that I don't know where they're plucking those numbers from. But Francis Ngannou would not make forty million from that fight. He would make a, a solid five, five, maybe ten million or somewhere in between those numbers. Like, and that's a good payday. That's a fucking good payday. He, I mean, he will get fustigated, but it's a decent payday and good for him. He should definitely take that. But uh, the problem is, uh, yeah, I, I, I think people are overestimating how much that fight sells. Because some people have been throwing some crazy numbers out there saying that, oh, you know, the, like, he'll clear 50 million easy. How? How will he? Right? It's not a bigger, it's not even a bigger fight than Dillian White and Tyson Fury. Not really. Not on a world stage. Because people seem to forget that actually outside of mixed martial arts fans, people don't know who Francis Ngannou is. Uh, I'm basing this on UK fans because actually I've got a lot of friends who are boxing fans who, who were watching the fight and they messaged me and said... Who is this guy that's in the ring with Francis? And I'd say, yeah, that's the current UFC heavyweight champion. They're like, oh, oh, okay. But they didn't know who, who, who he was. And that's not uncommon, right? Because the problem is, mixed martial arts fans, they seem to think that, that everybody knows who all the fighters are, that they're giant global megastars. Outside of Conor McGregor and maybe Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey, there are very few global megastars in mixed martial arts that are global megastars outside of the world of mixed martial arts. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And that's not being disrespectful to mixed martial arts. I'm a huge mixed martial arts fan, as you know. And I think that I'm hoping that the brand keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and they do become global megastars. But that's not the reality for Francis Ngannou. No disrespect to Francis Ngannou, but he hasn't got that. He hasn't transcended into the world of popular culture. He, he only really is a star within mixed martial arts, at least in the UK and as far as I can see in America. Africa might be a different story. Anybody watching from Africa, please let me know. Is Francis Ngannou a huge star outside of mixed martial arts? I mean, in popular culture, is he like a celebrity in Africa? I'd like to know because that might change things slightly. But either way, uh, yeah, I still think he gets a pretty decent payday and fair play to him. He should he should absolutely take that payday because his contract's going to be up 
like the end of uh, end of September, I believe, in uh, 2022. As soon as his contract's up, he goes and has an exhibition fight with Tyson Fury, makes his five to ten million, and uh, maybe then he comes back to um, mixed martial arts, or maybe he pursues boxing some more. Who knows? But either way, five to ten million—that's that's enough to take a take a fustigation at the hands of of Tyson Fury for me. Uh, I think I think that's the right choice, but. Yeah, I don't, he's, but he's not making you know the 30, 40 million that people are going on about. They're 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 pulling those numbers out of their ass. <laughs> quite frankly, it's just people think that the the Ngannou is going to bring the whole MMA fan base to watch um, Fury versus Ngannou. It's not going to happen because the problem is there's not really that much jeopardy in the fight because everyone knows who's going to win. Because the, and people say, oh, but you know, Floyd and Connor. It's like different thing right because Floyd Mayweather was 40 retired and fucking a lot smaller than Conor McGregor Tyson Fury is in his prime he just fought he's so he, he might be retired but he's in name only and he's bigger than Francis Ngannou and he's also the best heavyweight boxer on the planet and Ngannou doesn't stand a chance like a not a chance and that's no disrespect to Francis Ngannou I'm sure he can box to a point but not to a point that's going to get him near Tyson Fury. It's just th th those are the facts. And uh, th and honestly, Jeopardy sells fights and there isn't any. But yeah, anyway. Uh, speaking of boxing matches, Dan Hardy's going to be fighting Diego Sanchez in boxing. Uh, fair play to him. Apparently he's going to get... Uh, <laughs> one thing I've seen is, oh, he's going to make more money in his whole, than his whole UFC tenure. It's like, yeah, he was in the UFC for four years quite some time ago and he like made it to title challenger. But back then, like the pay was way different. So yeah, I'm not fucking surprised. But you can't really compare it with today's like numbers. It, like, either way... Like and also, if he wasn't an ex UFC fighter, would he be getting this payday to fight Diego Sanchez in a boxing match? I mm, it's worth asking that question. Maybe the UFC isn't so fucking useless, and maybe they're not just all robbing bastards. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of the fighters can use that brand that they spend so much money pushing to their advantage. I don't know. I'm just pure conjecture. What the fuck do I know? Right? I'm just a fucking idiot. But anyway. Uh, fight is set for Manchester in July. He's on Ricky Hatton versus uh, Marco Antonio Barrera. Uh, I can't say I've heard of Antonio Barrera, but it's good to see Ricky Hatton back in. People want to see uh, Ricky Hatton fight live, and you know there's the market for that. You should go and do that whilst whilst he still can. And uh, yeah, fair play to him. It's in Manchester as well. Good times. He doesn't even have to like uh, Dan Hardy doesn't even have to travel overseas. That's fucking perfect. And uh, then we have got Troll of the Week. Uh, I haven't actually put them on the list, but I know that I have actually got some in here. And, uh, yeah, so we've got, um, oh, I thought this would happen. It's, uh, what's his name? Ardy, what's his name? From The Simpsons. It's like, I've mastered the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now fall atop me and I shall destroy you. Because that happens so much in mixed martial arts fights. It's like, they, they just, you know, they fall onto their, like... It bugs me. Some some of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys, they just they just don't seem to focus on the art of being able to get the takedowns. Not all of them, just some. There are some that just think, well, I'll just lie on the floor and you have to come. No, no, that's not the, that is not the case. That is not the case at all. And uh, then you've got. <laughs> this one really did make me laugh because obviously you know Hamzat Chimaev and obviously uh, Khabib as well. They're they're always constantly going, hey brother, brother, hey brother, you look, you know, just always going, hey brother, that's not. But yeah, always, always calling everybody, everybody brother, right? And uh, this one, I think that's Maury. I think Maury's finished now. It's, uh, he might have retired. Either way, Maury is sitting there. He's got the DNA test results. He's like. The DNA results confirm that not everyone is your brother. And brother, on that crushing disappointment, I'm going to end the show. So uh, this week we've got Font versus Cheeto Vera. That is going to be hella interesting. There's going to be a couple of uh, Andrei Olovsky's fighting on that card as well. Uh, looking forward to that one. And, um, yeah, Jocko versus Mirchart as well. I'm going to have a couple of bets, a couple of cheeky bets that you will be able to see on the Patreon on Friday and then on the YouTube on the Saturday. All the picks will be in and uh, I'll be making some terrible bets. Until then, keep those odds long and those bets 
terrible.